All right, I'm gonna turn this off then, hang on. Super weird. All right, last try. Okay, I can I can hear you fine. Not a not a problem. I don't know. Weird. Okay. No worries. This, no worries. Yeah, well, as long as you feel fine, that's now that's it works. Good. Hang on. <laughs> now it works. Now it works. Okay. <laughs> I got you on here. All right, that's fine. sweet, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. How's uh, how's where where do you live right now? I'm in Atlanta. Let me see if I can. For some reason, this is a little dark. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the lighter spot for you so you can see it a little bit better. Here. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay, that's, that should be so, way better, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. So uh, I was in Mississippi training a little bit. I went to Starkville, where I went to college at Mississippi State and had some connections there, did some private training, and then I came back home. I'm actually taking some classes now because I got drafted okay. as a junior. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm focusing on getting my degree. I've got five classes until I graduate. Uh, in the meantime, I'm doing that. I'm doing my business, and I'm training on the side, too. So I got three pretty big gigs that I do every day. That's cool, man. That's cool. So where, where were you when this whole, you know, coronavirus, were you in, in kind of camp for obviously the, the Oakland A's? Is that where you were when, when this whole thing kind of broke or? Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually at Arizona and uh, we were doing like inter squad scrimmages yeah, yeah, basically yeah. and we would practice and do whatever, but eventually we would get information for example, hey, this is what's going on with Corona. Here's how you need to be safe. But it was never to the point where we thought we were going to go home until maybe the mm. last two days where we got an indication from the NBA and hockey and NHL, whatever. Um, soccer, I think, at the same time, they, they all kind of shut down. So it, was, it seemed pretty clear that MLB had to, and for good reason now that we've kind of seen what's gone on. So that's what happened. We, we were just yeah, in a yeah. meeting with uh, – with some of the higher up guys and they just told us, Hey, you need to be ready to go and pack your stuff. And we left and that was it. Oh. I was in Atlanta for a couple of days. I went over to Starkville to do some training a little bit. And now I'm back in Atlanta doing more training here. And like I said, trying to get my degree as well. That's cool. Taking, uh, taking the most of this opportunity, kind of like, you know, not just sitting down, feeling sorry for yourself, trying to, you know, kind of make the best of a, a bad situation, I, uh, you know, is what a lot of people obviously. So, um, so I, I'm assuming you grew up in Atlanta, right? Like, uh, you know, at an early age, was baseball the first love or did you play any other sports? Kind of everybody's baseball slash softball story kind of starts out in a different spot. What's your kind of baseball background? Yeah, so I loved baseball ever since I was a kid. I started playing when I was about four years old in Atlanta here. Uh, I was born in Pittsburgh, moved to Connecticut, and then I think I moved to Atlanta when I was three years old. So I've been here for a long time. I'm 25 yeah. now. Uh, I started playing rec ball three or four. Uh, I played tennis as well at a really competitive level. Uh, played basketball all the way growing up. Those were really my three favorite sports. My sister played tennis in college, so we were pretty fond on that. We traveled to a lot of tennis tournaments, and I competed there as well. And that kind of taught me a lot about like, like what it takes to – handle pressure situations, how to, you know, get through really tough opponents. Because in that sport, you're really on your own. You can't mm, rely yeah. on somebody else. It is just you out there. So you got to figure out, like, strength and weak strengths and weaknesses of opponents, just as you do kind of in baseball, right? Like, when you're matched up against a pitcher one-on-one, -on -one, you have to understand what pitches are going to be thrown to you and, like, are they going to – come up with a 95 mile an hour fastball randomly. Do I have that in the scouting report? You know, all these things to prepare yourself. We would do the same thing in tennis growing up at a much less level. Of course, I, I stopped playing when I was about 14 years old, but I played pretty competitively up to then. It wasn't just rec ball. It was like travel tennis and rankings and all that other jazz kind of like you see travel baseball now. Mm. So I was doing that. And then at, at the time I, I realized that I was a pretty good baseball player and it was time for me to more so focus on that. And I did base or basketball as well. It's just that tennis conflicted season wise. So yeah. I decided to go up with baseball. I'm glad I did. I have a ton of fun <laughs> playing and I, I'm much more of a team sport type of guy. I just have way more fun when I'm able to interact with 
with lots of players. So yeah, I'm, Great. I'm glad I went down that path. Great point. So anybody that's, you know, uh, listening to this, w- explain what like um, Atlanta's like for baseball. Cause I think Atlanta, I kind of know a little bit about Atlanta. I know there's like perfect game down there and stuff like that. Is Atlanta like considered a hot spot for baseball? I mean, probably a lot of different travel organizations, club organizations. Is that kind of what you grew up with? Like in that type of error too? Yeah. And there's so much hype in this area from different prospects being drafted. I mean, we had yeah. Michael Chavis, that I grew up playing against from this area. I'm trying to think of so many other guys. I mean, it seems like every single year there's like a, a different first rounder or five first rounders from the Atlanta area. That's pretty much what we competed against every single day. Mm. I played it out of the East Cobb Astros organization, and then I ended up playing at the East Cobb Yankees organization, which okay. is their top tier 18U level. So I played against really good competition all the way through, as well as during high school baseball. You know, a lot of people – when they have high school baseball in their areas, it's not as competitive. And then they yeah. have competitive travel. Uh, we had competitive all year long just because the area was so talented. I mean, it was, it was rare to go a full week, I guess, without seeing maybe a 90 mile, 90 mile an hour pitcher, which maybe in other areas of the country, you don't get to see a 90 mile an hour pitcher, maybe until you go to college or maybe until you go to Atlanta for mm. one tournament, you know? So it helped me kind of prep myself and understand what I need to do to improve to get to the next level. Mm, so the college experience. So, um, you know, the recruitment process, what, you know, what grade did you kind of commit and all that stuff? And, you know, uh, Mississippi State obviously is a, a pretty big time, uh, uh, you know, Division One. Was it always going to be Mississippi State or was there another school that was kind of in the mix? How do you end up at, at Mississippi State? Yeah, so I'll answer the first thing. Um, I started getting recruited when I was a freshman in high school, okay. as crazy as that sounds. I played on the East Cobb Astros team and we would travel to other colleges and play in front of those head coaches and the recruiting coordinators. And they would mark down notes of guys they thought would be a good fit. Uh, We ended up playing at Clemson and I had a good game that day. Jack Leggett told me to come to his office on a visit one time. And we ended up doing that. And then of course he said, Hey, we'd love to have you at the school. And I was pretty shocked, honestly, as a 14 or 15 year old kid at the time, I was like, wow, I'm I'm getting an offer for a Mm. college. And I, I haven't even really, played my first year of (laughs) freshman baseball you know so it was it was a lot to to kind of handle at that point in time and we didn't accept it because we didn't really know Mm -hmm. my parents went to Miami of Ohio and Colgate there we're not necessarily huge homers for the for a certain school but we knew that some schools were really good and we knew that Clemson was an excellent baseball baseball program so at that point in time I could tell that I was going to have a future in baseball and that I was going to be able to have some other options as well, because if you get one, you're probably going to get some others through that. So I waited it out. I ended up getting a couple offers from Georgia tech, uh, took some camp visits and stuff to South Carolina, Mm. got some interest from Florida, just schools around the Southeastern area, ACC and SEC. That's what I was interested in. And I ended up taking a visit to Georgia, which I was most interested in because my sister went there we live in Georgia. You got great yeah, that's cl- rates yeah. when you're in state. It's close. It's great. Um, but I had a really, really bad experience on my visits and mm. had a really good experience on my visit when I went to Mississippi State. I didn't even mm. know Mississippi State was a school, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just didn't know much about it. And eventually went to a camp, got an offer. And then after a couple of nights kind of stewing on it, made the decision that this was a really good opportunity. And at the time, that was one of the only schools that really saw me as a shortstop. Other schools mm. kind of saw me as a second baseman. I wasn't that big. I was not a huge, strong kid, but I was a good player, somebody that, I, that they could rely on. So they took a chance on me and said, hey, we really want you as our shortstop. And I ended up being the shortstop at Mississippi State. So it mm, all worked that, out. That is awesome. And uh, that's a good story as far as the recruitment process goes. Like that, It seems like that's the norm now. The kids are, you know, getting offers freshman year. Some kids are committing or, you know, verbally that freshman year, even even younger, eighth grade. So, I mean, is there anything you could, uh, you know, give advice? I mean, I mean, what I got out of that story is patience. You know, don't go with the first one. You know, like kind of uh, see all options and definitely important to, to go on that visit, you know, because you Georgia, I would have I would have checked you off beforehand, Georgia, but uh, you end up having a, a great visit at Mississippi State. Um, is there any advice you could give anybody that's might be going through this type of thing right now? Yeah, the thing about the whole thing is, even though you're committed, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it has it has no 
effect on whether you're the starting person or not when you get on campus. You have to understand there's people that are working and developing at all times. I actually, even though they said, hey, we'd love you to be our starting shortstop, they're telling everyone that. I mean, they're mm. telling everybody that you're going to be the starting player. You need to focus more on development at those stages, whether you're developed or not, or I'm sorry, whether you're whether you're uh, signed or not or committed or not, whatever you want to call it, if you're not focusing on development in those years and you think that you've already made it, you're getting passed up by players that maybe got a worse offer from you, maybe you're a walk-on, maybe you're going to a JUCO that will end up transferring. That's what people don't think about, you know? So mm. if I could go back, I would focus way, way more on my development than my hunt for colleges to come see me, right? Because – Ultimately, if you're really, really good, a college is going to end up finding you really easily. The mm. grapevine, everything travels fast through that grapevine that, that yeah. baseball and softball has. And I'm sure, you know, you talk to Samantha Shaw, it's, it's the same type of thing softball-wise, right? Yeah. If you neglect your development after you commit, you get passed up super easily. Mm. If you think about your development more so than committing and where am I going to go to school, everything else will just fall in line. And you'll get way more offers, you get better offers, you get more people interested in you because they understand that you're committed to your personal development and, and bettering the, their school and their university. Ultimately, it's those coaches' reputations on the line when they bring you into the university, right? So yeah. you showing that you're ready to go for that by developing yourself into the type of player that you need to be to be a great player as a freshman, that only, that only helps your case. Mm, that's that's a great point. I think anybody listening to this would uh, it probably took a, a lot out of that uh, that little kind of you know uh, blurb and answer you kind of gave right there. Also, what was the biggest difference from going from high school ball, travel ball to college at a at a big time school? Was it the crowd? Was it the atmosphere? What what was it? Yeah, that's that is a great point. I'll I'll run through my whole experience really for you guys. So in high school, like I said, I, I played in a Pretty good area, right? Yeah, it was definitely – it's a well-known area. Like, you say the, right. that area, and people are like, that's baseball heaven right there. So Right, right. So, I found myself maybe not thinking about so much as, hey, I need to develop into a stronger player. I was always thinking about how am I going to just win the game today. We played a ton of games. I didn't really yeah. focus on my own personal development as far as – my swing path needs to be like this. You know, it's more like in-game adjustments, less practice time, never really lifted weights in the summers ever. Mm. Um, and if I could go back, I, I would really change that. And as I progressed in my career, that became way more uh, of a focus point for me than playing in those games. We played about 140 games in a summer, sometimes Oof. as a 15 to 16 year old kid. <laughs> now, if you do the math there, that's a lot of double headers. Yeah, about every day, right? And traveling all over the country to get seen. Uh, what I probably would have done is maybe take a step back from those 140 games, maybe play half or less than half of those games mm. uh, and focus a ton on my strength and conditioning work. How do I get stronger in that time, right? Because as a high school kid, I was not very big. Like I said, I was not the best athlete. I didn't have the best arm. I didn't have the best speed. I wasn't a big kid at all. I didn't have the best power. I had pretty good contact ability, but not the best. So I didn't have the best any of the tools. Mm. But after some time, I got to develop those in college, right? College is great because you get to spend a lot of time uh, developing your craft in the weight room. We get a lot of hands-on assistance from strength trainers, right? We get a lot more field time to practice and work on things before games. So that's really helpful. A lot more hands-on instruction. And then when you get to pro ball, you use the things that you've learned from college and high school to make yourself into somebody that can rise the ranks in, in professional baseball. Now that takes in professional baseball, you're running your own show. There is no more mm. coach telling you what to do anymore. You have no more schedule for that. It's you better figure out what's right for you, especially because there's a long off season and there wasn't that before in high school and college, right? So you got to figure out what the right strength and conditioning program is for you. Uh, do you need to gain or lose weight? Do you need to increase mobility or do you need to just, do you need to flat out work on pure strength? Do you need to flat out work on pure speed? What do you need to increase? And this is a great time for you to do it because we have so many months off, especially right now with everything yeah, going definitely. on. This is a huge time for development. So I think as I went from high school to college to pro, I focused less on, less on winning games, mm. which was my huge thing in, in high school, win game, win game all the time to doing both win game and development. And now that I'm in pro ball, 
a massive portion of what I do daily is develop, develop, develop. How do I, how do I make my swing path better? How do I make my swing path more efficient? How do I make my arm work smoother and quicker? Those are all things that I'm working on daily. And I, I wish I, should, I could have flipped the script and maybe focused on development more in a high school age, right? Done the same thing in college development and play. And now when we get to pro, already have a great foundation mm. of that from before so that you can move through the ranks pretty quickly. And you see mm. the best guys, they're able to do that. So that's, hopefully that kind of describes that pretty well. That's, that, that's yeah, that was definitely really good. I, I could listen to that stuff all day. So um, at Mississippi State, did you go there with the intentions? Like I was, I'm sure you get this question a lot. I'm going there for three years and, and the goal is to be in, in that like major league baseball. Is that kind of, did you go there with that mindset or not, not really? Yeah, I would say I went there with that mindset. Everyone okay. talks about it. And, and to be honest with you, it doesn't matter what university you go to. There's yeah. really, really good players sometimes, and there's also really, really bad players. And they all say the same thing. I'll be pro in three years, I'm going to leave. You know, mm. it's really, when you think about it like that, that's great to have an end goal like that. But the best players are able to recognize, I need to have smaller term goals, right? I need to be able to have a better breaking ball this year so that I can become one of the best pitchers in the SEC so that I can in turn become that pro in three years. So I absolutely think it's great to have long-term goals and I did for sure but focusing on those shorter term goal goals will allow you to get to those long-term goals and it's the same thing with business right it's the same thing with the thing that I'm doing right now which is really the reason we're having this call yes yeah, yeah you got yeah. you gotta have short-term goals and you gotta have long-term goals as well but if you're focusing on long-term goals at all times you're crushing yourself mm. so hopefully that kind of makes sense there as far as baseball goes too because if I'm, if I'm so focused on getting drafted, but I'm not focused on, hey, I need to figure out how to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball. If I can't catch up to that, if I'm never on time to that, how am I going to get drafted? Mm. Right? So that was a big thing for me as a freshman. I, like I said, I came in pretty weak. I had, I had a lot of growing pains. I had to figure out how to face really, really high level SEC pitching. And I got, I got demolished that first year. I, I hit 245. You know, pretty decent. I was a really good defender. Good feel, yeah, good fielder, I was yeah. going to say. Really good to feel, feel. Good defender, right? Really, really high-level defender. People could trust me. But yeah. not necessarily the guy that comes to the plate where you go, okay, this guy's about to drive the ball, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that really was the, the changing point for me is when I got to be a junior, I understood I need to drive the ball to be a force going forward for somebody to really care about me. And, and then I started taking off. And that's still my focus to this day is how, how do we become a force of the plate along with my defensive skills that I've had for a long period of my life, combine those. And, it, and it's a good combo. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, trust me. We're Mississippi state fans. I, I got this <laughs> right there. I got a friend that lives in Mississippi state and, and he got that for me. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Mississippi, Mississippi state. You know, I, yeah. I definitely, I definitely know who you are and remember you playing. So I know that you definitely had a, a killer junior year and kind of uh, it, it was nice to see you kind of bet on yourself, I guess you could say. And Thank what was you. the bit, what was the biggest difference from, you know, what, and then we'll get into the, obviously the business, which I think is uh, during this time is probably taking off more just because everybody's homebound. Um, biggest difference going from Mississippi state, which is 15,000, you know, crazy fans, you know, ringing stuff like this to go <laughs> playing at, you know, um, you know, pr professional ball uh, for the Oakland A's. Was that kind of a tough adjustment because maybe who knows how many fans there are 500 fans. I, I, I don't know how many fans are showing up. Was that, was that kind of like a, Oh, this is weird. I'm, I feel like I'm going backwards moment. Yeah. Yeah. So the great thing about Mississippi state, it was super easy to produce adrenaline, right? Yeah. As players, if you have a lot of adrenaline running through you, you can do one of two things. You can get overhyped up and play worse than you are, mm. yes. or you can hone in that adrenaline and use it to your advantage and play better than you actually are. Right. So we see both of those all the time, especially when you get into SEC play, when the fans are all over the place or somebody starts screaming, Hey, ball four, whatever it takes to am, <laughs> yeah. right? You'll see people not be able to control their adrenaline or some of the best players will be able to use that adrenaline spike to their advantage to become better players, right? So that was a huge, huge learning point for me at Mississippi State is how do I control my adrenaline to the perfect level so that I'm not too high, not too low, but exactly where I need to be moving forward. That helps me a ton. Now, the difference between pro and, and college is I'm not getting many fans mm. at every single place. So I have to be able to bring my adrenaline level up now 
to my standard that I need, right? And that takes practice as well, just like putting yourself in situations before they actually happen um, so that you're kind of prepared for those. For example, I, I played last year in Beloit, Wisconsin. I don't know if you know much about that place. Not many fans, man. We probably had, probably had maybe 30 fans in some games. Oof. Not, not a lot going on. It's freezing. So you got to find a way to get yourself going. And that really just takes like mental preparation all the time. Mm, that is, yeah, that's, uh, that's true. So let's, let's talk about kind of what the business that you're doing. The, how did you come up with this idea? Where's the structure to this idea and what exactly it is for people listening? The, I, the name, I don't want to trip over, but Proco Plus, is that the name of it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I had this idea about two years ago uh, because I, you know, me and everyone else that plays baseball generally likes to teach lessons because it's a yes. great source of side income for us. We don't make much money at all during season, as many yeah. of you know. Uh, so we need to find side hustles. Now, for me, I absolutely love teaching baseball. It's one of my favorite things because I feel like it helps me with my game. I have to think about the movements that I do constantly and passing that information down only makes me better. So I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Another thing, too, is that I love business a ton, right? So I actually am working on my business degree right now, as we talked about before. That's cool. And I really wanted to be involved in some other business. So when I moved to Atlanta after I got drafted and everything and had my first offseason, I tried to go into a, into a company. And they mm. said, we'd love to have you. We love your personality. We're going to get you going, right? So I applied to, to, for the job and everything. I was looking for maybe even an internship, but they knew that I was going to spring training, so I couldn't get a job. And a lot of people found that same trouble there. They, mm. they found that they're going to end up, if they, even if they try to get a really good job somewhere, they're going to get declined or they're going to get fired or whatever it may be because they have to go to spring training. So there's no of income course. to be made there. And there's no learning experience to be made there either. Mm. So for me, I said, well, the, really the only way to do this is to do this by myself. I got to create my own business and, and learn from some things like that. Instead of having another corporation or company bring me on, I got to be able to create my idea, which I'm really into. I like running the show and I like recruiting other professionals and I like explaining things and marketing and creating strategies and creating business models. I loved all those things. So I set off on this journey to do something that I knew would be valuable to players, but also valuable to amateur young parents and players as well. So it really, it really encompasses two things. It allows minor leaguers and really anybody in professional baseball. We have, yeah. we have big league, retired big leaguers. We have every, everybody. We have professional strength trainers, and we're actually adding on other sports right now, which is fun. I can talk to you about that a little bit. That's cool. Uh, right. But it allows them to, to have a side payment coming into them all year long, right? Mm. Most guys, they have lessons, and then they go to spring training, and those lessons end, but there's no way to communicate with the pros, Right. Vice versa, from the amateur side of you, now we have communication at all times. Whenever you want, regardless of where you are in the world, you can talk to some of the best professional players at their respective sport whenever you want, at the touch of a button, which I think is pretty cool. That is cool. Now, now the beauty of the whole concept is this. We are not saying, hey, come check out our videos. We got 10 stock videos. 10 stock videos to get you your, your swing exactly where you need to be. That's not realistic, right? That's not mm -hmm. how baseball actually works. Everybody's swing is different. And what people really need is a mentor, somebody that can be with them over a long course of time that understands who they are, how their mind work, works, what works and what doesn't work for people, mm -hmm. right? The, the thing about baseball is some cues work really well for people and some cues actually end up harming people. It could be the same exact cue that works for me, actually makes somebody else worse. And I'll give you an example. For, for example, Alex Rodriguez, when he goes on MLB Network, he might say, hey, I love to think about chopping down the ball. I, I thought about my bad angle being like this, where if I thought about that, I would hit a ground ball to the pitcher. Every single time. Mm. So we need to have other pros sourcing their ideas together and possibly being able to share that information with somebody that's interested in learning from a particular pro. And we now have that. That's the whole idea is to be able to share information freely with a professional that you're working with over a long period of time. So hopefully that kind of encompasses everything and a uh, long answer there. That does definitely get the, the idea across of what it is. So um, you would say that this is not a, a cookie cutter approach, right? Like it's not like a generic factory, like, Hey, like everybody needs to practice this, right? 
Right. There is no, there, there are no stock videos at all. Once you, once you log on and decide which pro that you'd like to work with. Yeah. How many you guys do you have signed up pro wise? Like how many pro guys are signed up? Yeah. So we've got about 60 to 75 pros right wow. now. I'd have okay. to double check those numbers. We probably have about a hundred in the admin portal waiting to be accepted or not, but we, we have to choose the right pros. If you think That's... about it, some pros are better than others at explaining things that are on top of their assignments and everything as far as responding to amateurs because they deserve our response time right this is this is a premium service we're offering they're paying for us to be able to do this so we need to be able to have people that are on time with the responses giving great informative responses and that are in turn helping those young players get better and say i wanted to go on and i'm just i'm just asking because of parents perspective i my son or daughter pick somebody and they're just not they've tried it but they're not really gelling with them they're not really can I pick somebody else? Yeah. So what we generally do in that case is if there's something going on that's negative, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. the pro is, is not responding. We give okay. the money back immediately and we, we offer them other pros. Uh, generally, I get a lot of questions about who, who they should sign up with. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I lead them to somebody that I think would be a great fit. We've, we've had nobody have that interaction which I think is amazing. And it shows a lot about the yes. pros that we've selected on here and a lot about the personalities. We don't have anybody that's reached out to me and said, this isn't what I thought it was. Mm. I thought it was. It's generally, wow, this is really cool. This is a lot cooler than I thought. And the value proposition you guys have is unbelievable for the amount of communication that we can have. Right. So that's, that's generally been the response yeah, yeah. That we've had. I think we've had a total of maybe four unsubscribes since we've launched this business and it's now May, we launched it January 1st, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. And, and again, that just shows how good of a job and how thorough of a job the pros do on their end. Yeah, do you think this time period has, I mean, nothing has been good during this time period, but has almost helped like it, like, you know, where everybody's home and they are finding out about this new service, like has that kind of helped in a way? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Our, sales, our sales doubled as soon as people started going home and then tripled again last month. And, and that just is, that's because everyone's at home right now. Also pros are, are absolutely willing to put themselves out there. That's true. I mean, we've did, we've been doing a lot of marketing about ourselves and explain to people, getting people on the phone. And really this is the type of business. If you think about it, you're not going to just randomly purchase something that's a hundred dollars or more a month, right? You're going to do some research. So we spend a lot of time explaining to what we do explain to clients what we do and how we interact and everything. And once they feel comfortable to try it out, they love it. And then they usually tell their friends about us and, and it snowballs from there. And that's kind of the idea that I had originally uh, with the whole marketing scheme. And it, it's really, it's really worked well. And that's the way any good business should work, right? You should get a couple people on board. Uh, they see it, they love it. They understand how it's affecting them and their child and everything and their experience. And they see that they're, this is way less money than a, than a regular in-person lesson. I mean, for example, a regular in-person lesson is going to be 70 to 110, 120 yeah, yeah. an hour. A session, right? yeah, so one session. For one hour, yeah. So, you, <laughs> so although, yeah, you get to drive to a facility and it's got the net and everything, uh, that's, that's a lot of money adding up over an entire month, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we charge, like I said, 100 or – depending on how much face time you want, it'll go up $20 per hour. Okay. Uh, but from there, you get communication every single day for 30 days, right? So that's an entire month compared to an hour. Mm -hmm. And you can send videos back and forth, message each other. Like I said, you can purchase face time for an extra $20 an hour for the month. For the month. And we see people doing that a lot because they love that, that more personalized interaction. And, and again, it's pretty inexpensive if you think about it, comparing it to what actual in-person lessons are. Absolutely. It sounds like, it sounds like they're willing to help with anything swing, you know, mental side of it. It sounds like they're, they're almost like, you know, they'll be there, you know, throughout the day to kind of help, uh, help the kids. So that must be, that must be exciting this time of year. I'm glad that uh, to hear that you are doing well during this time. So what other sports are you um, thinking or uh, adding to the future? Yeah. So first of all, right now we also, we do softball in addition yes, with baseball yeah. right now. We also have strength trainers that are specific per sport, right? So okay, for overhead cool. throwing, we need to have some type of an overhead throwing specialized trainer, mm. right? You can't do a football lift and expect to have really good 
uh, rotation in your scap or, or your rotator cuff or whatever. Okay. So we do a ton of work with professional advanced professional strength trainers. And we're also going to have that on the other respective sports that we have. So right now we're looking at adding golf and, and soccer uh, with my connections in those sports, which I have quite a few professionals in those. I can see it being an awesome model, uh, especially being able to dive in and helping those kids that are probably looking for information to get help, allowing them to connect with more professionals that are working on their craft daily. That's a pretty cool connection. When you can talk to somebody that's been through a whole recruiting process, talk to somebody that's maybe had some really difficult times and had to get through those or had some great moments and can discuss what they were thinking about in those great moments. There's just so much to be said about having open line, having an open line of communication with a, with a professional over a long period of time. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds, sounds fantastic. Anybody listening to this, where can they check this out? They can go on your Instagram or would you rather them just go directly to the, the pro co plus uh, Instagram? Yeah. I mean, you can go to Instagram. That's completely fine. Uh, our Instagram handle is Proco plus. Um, my Instagram handle is Ryan Gridley 10, I believe. So you can see any of this stuff on either of those. Uh, but also if you went on web browser, I think it's really smart to start at more info dot proco plus dot com. We have a lot of information there for people that want to know about pricing, want to know about how the system works. And it's just a, it's a nice layout to, to kind of show you and give you a little bit more information about why we do this and how it can benefit you guys. And of course we have a contact button if you guys need help about questions, maybe who, who would match up with your son or whatever. But we also, when you go and create an account, you can see biographies of certain players. We're actually adding in a video component right now that'll kind of show a little bit about the pro before you subscribe to them, which we found is going to be helpful. So yeah, those are some good things that we'll be able to kind of help the customers and young players and parents get a feel of who we are. Absolutely. And can they, anybody listening to this, I'm sure they're, they're, they're loving what you're saying. Can I, can I pick you as a coach or is it just your plate is just too full right now to kind of yeah. dive into that? <laughs> I, I honestly thought I would be, I would have much more slots than I have, but my plate is so full right now with, I was open for the last two months and with everything that happened and the marketing that we were doing, my slots filled up very quickly, but we do have some incredible pros that you can work with. I mean, we've got, I think I just looked at it yesterday. We have four all decade team players that are sitting waiting to help you guys. We have almost, I mean, every single team, it feels like, represented and I know that's not true but we have so many major league teams that are represented in this we've got kids from other colleges that had incredible college careers that are now playing professional I mean we've got so many other pros that are more than able to help in so many different ways and they specialize in different things that's the mm. beauty of this whole thing is you can find something that's perfect for you right if you're looking for a middle infielder we have tons of those maybe you're looking for a switch hitting middle infielder or maybe you're looking for a really good defensive catcher or maybe you're working for a drop-down pitcher. Or maybe you're just strictly look, looking to gain speed and strength. We have everything that fits somebody's need. And that's really, when I designed this, I wanted to give that option to anybody looking for something. I didn't want to disclude anybody. Yeah, and I like that when I spoke to Samantha, um, and that's how I, I, we got in contact. Um, so I got to show some love there that um, – that you added softball to it too. Cause you know, sometimes people will go baseball here, softball there, but the two are very obviously keeping them together and um, you know, having it uh, you know, so that no, nobody gets offended. I like that. You know, it's good. Right. It's not even nobody gets offended either. It's <laughs> the, the, both of the sports, there's just so much information to be learned and the recruiting process is very similar. Yeah. And both yeah. of those sports, uh, the, the game is similar as far as, you know, base pad, bases and the, the whole idea of rounding the bases, getting runs and everything like that. But there's also some, some serious differences as far yeah. as the trajectory of pitches coming in, distance of pitch coming in, understanding what stealing technique and everything. So I, it just made more sense for me to have girls softball because they can teach that specific thing. I'm not going to try to tell somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. how to steal a base against somebody that's throwing underhand. And they have to stand on the base until it crosses. What I don't even know the rule. I think it has to cross the zone for you to steal, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. So I'm not going to go ahead and teach that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Just, just as I'm not going to go ahead and teach somebody how to pitch because I'd be doing them an injustice. Right? I'm going to lead them to a really high, high qualified, really talented pitcher that we have through our site. So just as I'll lead any softball girl to the right 
softball pro, right? We have, we've got slappers on here. We've got pitchers, we've mm. got catchers. So, and we're going to continue to add on to that. Uh, that's a pretty fairly new thing that we've added. So we'll continue to make that better, but it's been really fun to see how this process has grown and see really how the customers have enjoyed interacting and how they love to keep interacting and understand the value that we're kind of bringing them. Awesome, man. That sounds really good. And also you won't let anybody's plate get too full. Like it sounds like you kind of know yourself, you know, your, your abilities that like, Hey, my plate's a little full right now. Um, or other people kind of like also kind of, they get slotted up like, dude, you're full now. You can't take any more people. Is that kind of part of it too? Exactly. And there's so many things to protect professionals with this because I had all of them in mind when we were doing this. A lot of the questions we hear from from parents or players is what happens when your season starts back up? Are you guys going to be able to do this? Well, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I didn't plan on coronavirus happening. I, yeah. I've been building this for about two years now. We launched in January way before I, I knew about Corona. Yeah. So with, with, that in, with that idea in mind, we protect professionals by allowing them to choose if they want to be available for FaceTime or not, allowing them to choose how many slots they have open and when they're unavailable anymore to be working with. Uh, most, most players are able to handle a good amount of slots right now. Uh, it's just for me because I'm doing so much work on the back end of building this business, uh, handling school. Yeah. School, school, but also handling my own clients. I'd yeah. be doing my own clients an injustice if I added another, say, five clients to my, to my list. So I think it's great. If anyone has questions, I'm more than happy to send them information to the next pro that I think would be a great fit. Awesome, man. Well, we'll put the link up so people can go right to the website. Uh, if they have a question, they could just email. I'm sure it's on there um, and, and they'll email any questions and definitely check it out because it sounds fascinating for, for right now what's going on. It sounds even better for, you know, when things kind of get going again, like very easy um, seems like new age type of stuff, stuff that like is going to maybe, I don't want to say eliminate, but makes life a little bit easier maybe for the parent that does want to drive their kid an hour to a facility exactly. to go hit and stuff like that. So it definitely sounds like uh, keeping up with the times. Um, everything's evolved. And I, I don't know if this, you know, you might be on top of something here where you might see other people being uh, doing the same exact type of idea. So I, I think it's awesome, man. Um, and, uh, anything you want to leave us with, I think, you know, we definitely covered a, a lot in, in your career, in the company, anything you want to leave us with, what can we expect for, for the growth of the, this company? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that I'm working on right now. I, I'm just most excited about being able to gather more pros from other sports and make this really the hub of professional advice. I want this to be the place that people go to where they have the best customer service, the best mentorship over a long period of time where they feel like they can develop and actually get something out of it, right? There is no one click, quick fix, swing adjustment thing. This is not real, right? You, you can go to YouTube all you want and look up top five ways to become best hitter, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best process. For me, mm -hmm. I know that that wouldn't do anything for me, right? I do a lot better when I actually can find somebody that's credible, that's working on their craft daily. So I'm excited to continue presenting that to young players, parents, and coaches, but also presenting maybe golf swings as well and helping those markets get better at what they're doing. Because there's a million golfers, me included, I shot 105 yesterday. I'm not the best golfer, man. But <laughs> if I could have got some help from, from a pro golfer on some maybe tips of my swing, there's a million different shots, right? There's a, there's a wet sand shot that I haven't figured out yet. There's a, there's a bump and run shot that I haven't figured out yet. And there's a bunch of kids that are really serious about their game that want to go to college and learn that and become professional as well. So they'll have that option. Same thing with soccer. Same thing with other sports coming soon too. So I think it's, it's really exciting to think about the possibilities of where this is going to go. Um, I'm just, I'm looking forward to be able to present that to everybody. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I'll put the link up. Everybody can check you out on Instagram pro co plus uh, uh, Ryan Gridley, uh, I think it's Ryan Gridley 10. You can check him out too. He's got uh, a good story and, uh, and you guys need a root for a guy that is in uh, professional baseball to make it to the MLB and also have success in business. Cause he just seems like a good dude and, and please stay safe and healthy and, and hopefully talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no worries, man. That was, I think a lot of people got a lot out of that. And I think, um, I think that, uh, a lot of people are going to sign up for that, not from this, but just I see where this could go in, in yeah. you know, growth of it a year, two years from now. So I want to say that when this thing blows up, we had you on the <laughs> podcast, all right? Like, you know, before you get to the time, all right? <laughs> Do it, man. This is great. Any exposure for us is really helpful. So I appreciate I, you spending this time with me. No, no worries, man. Good luck, all right? All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. You see you. Too.